The scene is set. The new standalone virtual reality headsets have hit the market. The Oculus Go, the Lenovo Mirage, and the Vive Focus. And we briefly talked about the Oculus Go late last week with the Snapdragon 821, 32 gigabytes to 64 gigabyte storage. It is not expandable. There's no IPD adjustment here. There is a thousand titles that launch with this unit. And I, I fervently believe that this is gonna have the biggest impact in education, elementary school, high school, and universities. At, you know, at that price point to get people to, to experience immersive educational content, you can't beat this. And uh, they've already sold 1.8 million units of the Oculus Go. I think that was reported yesterday. I expect that to continue to rise. You know, the 72 hertz uh, raster scan or, 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 or resolution does mess with your eyes just a little bit, um, you know, versus the Lenovo Mirage and the, and the HTC Vive. They're at 110 degrees field of view at at 75 hertz uh, accordingly. The three hertz is, is not noticeable, but I can still see it a little bit. Um, I did add an additional battery here. The, it's about two, two and a half hours. If it's if it's really intensive applications, I'm only getting two hours out of this. Two and a half hours, uh, three hours I've added on with this additional battery. And you know, I think everybody's really gonna enjoy this. So let's go ahead and first start with the occipital bridge. Now this is a very interesting concept to me because it takes the daydream um, concept to another level, right? So with the daydream, you're just inserting your headset, which I actually have it over here on this on this little uh, counter. This is using the uh, this little sensor, the structure sensor, to create a 3D map of your environment, kind of like Slam, but it's more more or less a, of a model instead of real time mixed reality. It, it does use the iPhone's RGB and inertial measurement unit data. And along with this 120 degree stereoscopic um, field of view. Now, let me, instead of actually mirror casting this or airplaying this over to uh, my screen here, I created a little video for you guys to see. Let's see if I can get it to work. There we go. So I have a couple different applications. This is giving you the um, infrared and RGB, and then this is the 3D mapping for the headset. I wanted to show you three different applications. Essentially, it was the 3D mapping, the RGB and an infrared view, and then the view from uh, Bridget, which is the fun little robot that you can kind of play around in your in your your local area. And in these 3D maps, and I, I also you can connect this same sensor up to your iPad and create 3D maps of your room that are highly resolute. So this is an X X-ray view of this uh, of actually the HTC Vive, uh, HTC Focus, and this is now this is the Bridget. So this is going to map this entire room in real time, and it's very quick, painless and seamless. And uh, I enjoyed this experience mostly, except and you'll kind of see once we jump in here why it's a little disorientating because once once you get inside of the headset, instead of looking at a real time view, you have a 60 hertz raster scan, a 60 hertz um, display, but what you notice is when it's initializing this mixed reality scene is not only the, the latency, which is less than 10 milliseconds, but this is a recreation of that scene, almost like a point cloud. Um, I mean, the lenses are amazing. They're using a PMMA optical, optical grade acrylic, but when you're looking inside the scene, it's not real time. It's, it's actually the scan that we just took, which knows where all these, it creates the boundaries for little Bridget robot to run around and understand. Now I wish this would do this real time consistently consistently on a loop, instead of having to restart the application and rescan it. Um, it's a little bit frustrating, um, but, but I mean, you can see some of the potential applications for this instead of buying a virtual reality headset. If you already have an iPhone and you want to experience mixed reality, the price point for this is uh, it's about $279 for the structure sensor. I think it's $349 um, with the headset included, so you might as well just get it anyway. Uh, you know, when you look at the price set across all the other different products, $199 for the Oculus Go, $400 from the Lenovo, uh, Lenovo Mirage, and around $650 for the Vive Focus. That's for the dev kit. I expect that price to come down once it reaches the uh, United States in, in, a, in an official release, probably around $550. Or so, but as, as Bridget wraps up here, um, I, I enjoyed this. Now there isn't a, an extensive library of content for this. You can port all of uh, 
current virtual reality applications over to this device, but I just don't see how, how you would use this on a daily basis. And it's definitely not as user friendly as the Oculus Go. I mean, the Oculus Go, my daughter used that last night and it was a cinch for her. She loved it, absolutely. So let's let's jump into the Lenovo Mirage. Now this, this is a headset with six degrees of freedom. So it's a Snapdragon 835, a big difference, substantial difference when compared to the Oculus Go. O Oculus Go is at 821. We're stepping up to an 835 here. And the 835 chipset actually al allows support for dual 16 megapixel fisheye cameras. That's why the Oculus Go doesn't have that because the, the actual chipset doesn't support um, those applications. Now, one of the glaring issues on this headset, honestly, is not supported audio, right? And if you look at the, the Oculus Go, $199, it has full spatial sound. This, you still have to have a, a port in here and connect up to your audio, and it's, it's a little cumbersome. It, it, it's, it seems to me like a shocking omission on a $400 headset that has world, um, world tracking, um, world sense tracking, six degrees of freedom, and uh, I, it, it's, it's, it's a little stunning to me that they left that out. Although the world sense tracking does have a one meter square area. So when you're inside of it running an application, you'll have to repress that button every, every minute if you move out of that square, which is incredibly easy to do. Now here's a little tidbit of information I've read on the internet. There is a developer mode for this where you can remove those boundaries and walk freely around. The Pico Neo, the Six Degrees of Freedom Pico Neo, not the Goblin, which is like the Oculus Go, allows that. It, it removes those boundaries and you can freely walk around. I was supposed to have it here, but it got back ordered and the Lenovo Mirage showed up. Um, one of the other things about this headset that's it's a bit confusing is when you go into the store, you can't search for applications. Now, that seems a, a little odd to me coming from a company that built its reputation on search. You can't search for applications. It kind of feels like the, the, the uh, online 1997 Sega Genesis platform that I had through my local cable company. We just kind of had to scroll through applications over and over again. And there's 350 applications you have to scroll through. So the frustrating part that I had was once you get to a certain point and you find an application, let's say your battery dies, now you, now you want to get back to that application. You can't just search it. You've got to scroll through the entire Daydream library just to get into it. Um, but aside from that, um, I, I really highly enjoyed this headset. I mean, it has the same resolution and the same Fresnel lenses, Fresnel lenses as the Oculus Go. It's a little bit more comfortable, obviously, as you can see, this has a little adapter on the back as well as you can kind of tighten in. And the SD card expansion slot up to 256 gigabytes is on the side. That is an enhancement over the Oculus Go. There's no upgrade uh, um, availability on the Oculus Go. Um, but I, I do enjoy this, and uh, I don't foresee the price point of $400 sticking for very long. Um, just like a lot of the mixed reality headsets that Windows has and the Samsung Odyssey and the Acer, et cetera, et cetera, those, those, those headset prices have come down. I would expect the same thing here. Um, but as for right now, I, I, I really... I find it to be fantastic. Let's see if we can go ahead and connect this up to the Google Chromecast I have behind me. And we'll, we'll power the unit on to see if you guys can get just a little insight into the headset as it's running. So I should have it here. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start up the operating system here. It comes right up and says Daydream powered by Android. And it's very comfortable as you're wearing it, I have to be honest. There's definitely an upgrade in the comfortability from this to the Oculus Go. So if I'm going to cast this, I should be able to select my TV right behind me, which has the new Google 4K Chromecast. And there you go. There we go. Now it's finally working. Sorry about that. So this is the Daydream operating uh, platform here. We're inside of it. And the cast button is really simple. I need Google Chromecast to work. I have the 4K Chromecast. You can go to your library. It has about 350 different applications. You can use the touchpad to kind of stream across. And uh, let's go ahead and do this Life in VR from BBC Earth. Here we 
guys should see that right behind me. I'm not sure how clear it is on your side. Again, I, I, I was trying to upload this into my, into my laptop. I was having some technical difficulties, so this might be the easier way to do it for now. And this headset, just like the Oculus Go, does not have IPD, so it's just one single LCD screen. You cannot adjust that for your eyes at all. kind of go through this. It's beautiful. There is an upgrade on the field of view here, 110 degrees for the Lenovo Mirage, 90 degrees for the Oculus, and you can definitely see it. And you can feel it just, like I said earlier, it, it feels like a more premium headset than the Oculus. All right, if we want to just kind of kick it back to the home button here and get everything started up. And there we go. So that one's down. And now we can come back to the, the, the main event for me is the HTC Vive. Um, this is the premium headset, the kind of the gem of, of, of all the different types of headsets that are out there. And now I'm going to shift this over and see if I can get my mirror cast up so I can show you guys. There we go. Now, the HTC Vive, the build quality on this is unsurpassed. If you, if you feel this and, the, and just the mere size of this, is, uh, I was watching one of the, the posts and uh, my friend Anthony online is another virtual reality blogger, well-known guy, actually placed this inside uh, of the headset himself just to show how much bigger this headset is than the Oculus Go all the way around. It really feels firm and solid. So let's go over some of the specifications. This does also have a, a, a Snapdragon 835. Uh, now the enhancements on that from the 835 to the 821 is, is also download speed. So the 821 is limited by 600 megabytes of download speed. This upgrades it to one gigabytes, um, which is substantial when you're trying to you know, immerse yourself in real time virtual reality. This does have inclusive spatial audio, which is hidden right here in the, in the headset itself. Um, and it has best-in-class um, AMOLED screen, 3K, and I, I believe uh, the resolution is 2880 by 1600. And one of the other amazing um, options for this is, is the ability to upgrade it to two terabytes of S SD storage. That's amazing, right? The Oculus Go is, is stuck at 64 gigabytes. Then we have 256 gigabytes for the uh, Lenovo Mirage. This is up to two terabytes. Now this is six, de six, degree to six degrees of freedom, um, which is just like the Pico Neo, but it's a bit frustrating again because you have six degrees of freedom and you have a three degrees of freedom controller. So I really like to see these guys move up to the six degrees of freedom ultrasonic controllers that Pico Neo is using. Um, I, I, I really believe that it would move the immersive experience to another level within these standalone virtual reality headsets. Now, this was originally supposed to be a, an, an, a collaboration between Google and HTC, and it was dropped. So this is now operating on its own standalone operating system called Vive Wave. And there's 12 other partners on Vive Wave, I believe, which is 360, CocoCo, Amdora, um, but also Pimax and Pico. So the Pico Neo headset will, will run on the Vive Wave um, porting. Um, and when you get in here, I think one of the things you first see is, is the library is unbelievably limited, you know, because there's only a few different development partners. It hasn't been out there for very long. This is still a development kit. So all in all, there's probably 30 or 40 applications on there. But with the firmware upgrade last night, it did add a browser. So you can browse the internet 
It's called the Vive Port Browser, and they didn't have that a couple days ago. But now you can browse the internet. It does come up with Baidu first in Chinese, which I thought was kind of funny. But uh, this, this is the wave of the future. When I think about Snapdragon 845 and their new virtual reality SDK and development kit. Next year, all the all the, all these different headsets will be upgraded with the Snapdragon 845, which will include support for infrared eye tracking, and that will also completely change the landscape. Uh, but they they've tried with the 835 and also in the 821 with the Oculus Go to enhance some of the the chip utilization uh, via fixed um, fixed foveated rendering. Now that's not the normal foveated rendering where you would wherever you look. It changes the resolution and everything else kind of gets blurred out. This fixes it in the center of your gaze and then renders everything out. I, I watched an 8K video in this last night where it was doing foveated rendering on everything outside of my view, and it was it was mind blowing. It was it was stunning. It was gorgeous, and that's where a lot of this stuff will go. So the eight uh, the Snapdragon 845 next year with that dev kit. Um, you know, the, the CPU process right, increases efficiencies by almost 40%, increases battery life by almost 30%. Th those are, you know, significant advances in chip design. And that development kit is already out. They already have an 845 um, baseline design headset that people are testing and designing right now. Uh, Oculus has their Santa Cruz, which is six degrees of freedom just like this. I'm unsure if they have a six degrees of freedom controller, but it would be nice if they did. Um, anyways, but uh, th that's what I have for all three of these devices. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any questions. Drop a comment at the bottom um, here on my post or send me a direct message. Please do. And I'll continue to post more of these as we get more, um, when we get the opportunity to test out different types of technology and virtual reality headsets. I'm looking into the Lux, uh, Luxed VR, which incorporates EEG technology here um, for, for scientific research. Very interested in that. Um, we're also waiting on the View 6 Blade and the ODG R9s. And obviously the Magic Leap. We were hoping to have that here today. It didn't show up. Uh, but there's a lot of other technologies out there to keep an eye on. But you got to keep this in mind. Most of these companies are all sharing these licenses, these, these technology um, patents that are released. And... I'm still waiting for somebody to come out and just have an amazing technology that every single person can enjoy and it brings millions and millions of people in, I'll, these adopters. Because in the virtual reality community, augmented reality, mixed reality, for the last two or three years, we've been waiting for this moment. That's why there was such hype over the Oculus Go because everyone wanted to know, is this it? Is this gonna take us to that next level? Is that headset now gonna have adoption of 10, 20, 30 million people? I believe so. I think the Oculus Go is that is that entry um, and level product where people are going to come in and now try it, just like the Samsung Gear was. But it was kind of a uh, had a little difficulty to put your phone inside of it, and then if the phone died, the battery had to charge two different things. The Oculus Go, you don't need any of that. These other ones now are going to start pulling more consumers into the virtual reality market segments, and I, and it's hard for me to to kind of comprehend why people will go out and buy a Vive Pro, even though it's running at 90 hertz and you get full six degrees of freedom, out, unless you're running some kind of a, a professional consultancy group or we have a large arena where you have people playing games in virtual reality, you know, with the new Wi-Fi and TPCast, uh, wireless solutions coming out for the mixed reality headsets and the Vive, that's not coming out until probably August or September. So there's some time here for, for people to get immerse or get, at least get into these um, new headsets. So uh, again, thank you very much. I can go on all day about this. I appreciate it. And I know a lot of people were looking forward to, to this presentation and uh, thanks. Have a great weekend.